Hi there everyone and welcome back to the final part in our exam technique webinar series. This is part four of four parts and I hope you have found the previous three parts very useful in your preparations for your Leaving Cert or your Junior Cycle Maths exam in June. This week we're looking at putting down all of your work on paper, so showing all of your work and maximizing your grade in doing so and hopefully avoiding as much as we can avoiding making silly mistakes and errors. So as mentioned, the previous three parts, we have looked at structure of the exam, which is very important for the changes in the 2022 exam. And for we looked at timings and we also looked at pre-exam checklists and things to remember on the day of the exam. So those are all available on the mathstutor.ie website. And there's also a free exam technique booklet available at the mathstutor.ie forward slash booklet. And that goes into a lot more detail on um, how to maximize your grade and ensure success in your maths exam. So our overall aim in the exam, be it leaving cert or junior cycle, higher or ordinary level, our overall aim is to show the examiner what we know in order to earn as many marks as possible for that work that we're putting down on the page. And I suppose we also aim to not lose marks unnecessarily, so not make silly mistakes that we wouldn't normally make um, in a maths question. So remember, I suppose, that um, you've, you've done all the hard work at this stage. You've done all the studying. You've done your homework. You've done your classwork. Um, you've revised all of the notes over the last couple of years. And now it's up to you to put on paper and to show the person that's correcting your exam exactly what it is that you know and show them the hard work that you've put in. So um, try keep your handwriting as clear as possible. Um, if nothing else, that puts an examiner, somebody that's correcting your paper, in a good mood when they pick up your paper to, um, or when they scan your paper to correct it. Um, keep your handwriting nice and neat, and it makes it much easier to follow. Work down the page as opposed to across the page. So uh, make sure your work follows on down, downwards on the page. Use appropriate spacing. So don't try cram everything into um, a little tiny box. Remember, if you don't have room, uh, in the exam booklet, there's always pay extra spare pages at the end. And you can also um, ask your superintendent for extra pages if needs be. Make sure that you write within the black boxes on the page. Um, this goes for leaving cert and junior cycle. Um, they will be, the exam scripts will be scanned online this year in order to be corrected. And you're not guaranteed that if you have something outside of the box, it's not guaranteed that it will be uh, readable or legible. So make sure that you write within the boxes with your blue or your black pen. And if you need more paper, don't try to squash everything into, like I mentioned, a little box. If you need more paper, just ask. Um, make sure, and I suppose in maths, above all other subjects, it's really, really important that you show your work because we can gain attempt marks even if we don't get to the exact correct solution. So make sure that you're showing all the work within your answer. Don't go getting a separate page to put your rough work on. Show your rough work in the question box. Um, show it with your solution. Show all of your work there because you can gain marks for your rough work. Do not use Tipex. So don't ever use Tipex. If you make a mistake, just draw a line through it and explain, write a little note for the examiner to show that you've done, um, you've done the extra work or the correct work at the back page if needs be. If you're using a calculator, don't just go straight to your calculator and type it in and write down your answer. You must write down on your page whatever steps you have taken on the calculator. So whatever work you've done on the calculator, that must go down on the page also. Uh, if needs be in the question, draw a diagram or a sketch. So if you need to explain to your examiner, remember the person that's marking your script is only human. So you can draw a diagram or a sketch explaining. If you need to give a reason for your answer, so for example, if you, if you've solved a quadratic equation, you've gotten two answers, but you're only accepting one of them. Give a reason why you're rejecting the other answer. So explain to the examiner why you have answered in such a way. 
use your mathematical language and or plain English. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you can't think how to say it in formal maths language, then just use plain English to explain it rather than leaving the question blank. Never ever leave a blank in your maths exam. You can't get any marks for blanks. Uh, whereas if you write down something, you may get marks for it. So write down something and you might get some part of it right. You might get those um, attempt marks, but never ever leave a blank as you can't get marks for it. Your formula and tables booklet, or you might know it as your log tables, um, you will get one of those in the exam. So no need to bring in your own one that you've been using in class over the last two or three years. These will be provided to you in the exam. They'll be handed out at the start and you'll need to hand them up with your paper at the end. If they're not handed out, just ask for it. But make sure that you're familiar with your uh, formula and tables booklet during your revision. So make sure you know uh, what page your formulae are on. So for example, make sure that you know that all of the formulae for coordinate geometry, the line and the circle are on page 18 and 19 of your uh, log tables or make sure that you know that the minus b formula or the quadratic formula is on page 20 of your log books um, so that you're not scrambling in the exam and you're not wasting time searching for the pages in the formula and tables booklet. So for your graphs use the squared paper um, and use the existing lines in the squared paper to help to keep your uh, graphs nice and neat. Choose a sensible scale. So if it doesn't make sense to go up in ones on your X or your Y axis, maybe it makes more sense to go up in fives. So make sure it's a sensible scale that you're using. And if you're using your graph to answer a question, make sure that you show your work on the graph. So normally the question will state, uh, use your graph to find X, Y, or Z, you must show the examiner that you've used your graph. And the examiner does not know that you've used your graph unless you actually show a pencil or pen your guidelines um, from reading the graph. Okay, so avoiding errors. Um, put simply, I suppose, you're going to inevitably make some mistakes in the exam that you wouldn't ordinarily make. Um, and that's normal, that's completely normal um, because you're under a little bit more pressure in the exam. But we have that safety net of our five or eight minutes um, in Leaving Cert at the end to go back and to recheck all of your calculations and to avoid those errors. Be really careful with minus signs. This is probably the most popular mistake made in maths exams. Um, don't try to do everything in one step. So break it down into manageable steps for yourself. Don't try to put everything into the calculator together. Break it down, maybe do certain brackets first. If the works have become overcomplicated, just be aware of that, okay? And go back and see, um, have you answered the question correctly? Use your calculator for checking answers. So again, there are things that nine out of 10 days that you will do correctly. But this day on the exam, like I said, you're under a little bit of added pressure. So use your calculator to check your simple calculations. Um, again, do your checks and your verifications. Make sure that you're verifying every answer. I suppose the beauty of maths is that we can verify our answers. We can check if our answer is right, particularly in algebra. Um, if we get a solution to an equation, we can sub that back into the equation to see if it satisfies the equation. So use that to your advantage. Ask yourself, does the answer in front of me, does it make sense? Does it look right? OK, um, if it's an answer in the ten thousands and it should only be in the hundreds, you've definitely gone wrong somewhere. So go back and check and you'll have loads of time in each question in order to do that. So ask yourself, does my answer make sense for the context of the question? Make sure that you're using the correct degree of accuracy. So normally questions will say, give your answer to two decimal places, give your answer in third form. Uh, give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. Give your answer to three significant figures or to the nearest meter, for example. Make sure that you're giving the correct degree of accuracy in your answer. Um, normally, it's worth one mark at the end of each part of a question and all of those one marks add up. Make sure that you're answering the question that you have that has been asked of you.
Okay, again, a very common mistake in leaving cert and junior cycle maths, people going around about way and not actually answering what they've been asked. So read the question carefully and answer exactly what's been asked of you. Recheck all of your steps and you've time at the end um, and time in built in each question to do this and check your final answer also. Okay, guys, so I'm hoping that you found that um, final uh, webinar, so the fourth of four webinars on exam technique, I'm hoping that you found that of some use and that it has set you on your way and has prepared you nicely for your exams in June. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. And I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in over the last couple of weeks. And I want to take this opportunity to wish you all the very, very best of luck with your junior cycle or your leaving cert um, maths exams in June. Um, make sure that you try stick to our timings and have a look back over the previous three webinars also, which are available on the mathstutor.ie. Also, we have uh, numerous very, very useful videos and solutions and notes pages on the mathstutor.ie that are all there for you to access as well. Thank you.